Okay. Uh, so, can you hear me clearly? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so you know, so we were discussing that uh, the projects have triple constraint and we've got to take care of this. And if you don't take care of yeah. this, that that will result in the mismanagement of the project. So, you know what happens, there is time overrun, cost overrun, then dissatisfied stakeholders. I mean, our customer, clients and our uh, associates, uh, business associates, partners. And our uh, the team members, those who are doing the work, they, are de uh, they also feel very much demotivated because the results are not being achieved and there is loss of customer and money. So, you know, so that's why we need uh, a formal project management methodology. So, we should have formal project planning. So, formal project planning means that it should be, I mean, uh, almost like enterprise-wide. All the organizations work which is to be done should be some sort of based upon certain process, right? So, that should mm -hmm. be formal that we should have this process and we should implement this here we should plan the project we should have an approval of the same and then we'll do a review and cross check with the constraints so that is the part of the formal project planning and once we have that in place then what we need is active monitoring and control so monitoring and control would basically make sure that whatever we have planned is something which is working out properly as we are uh, executing the plan and then there could be additional elements of tools, techniques and the methodologies. So that is the solution. Yep. So project management methodology is a collection of process methods and tools and it provides a roadmap to manage the project effort and activities. It provides a checklist of yep. key deliverables and activities. So let's go ahead. So the processes they have inputs, tools and technique. Now mm -hmm. have you uh, say if you want to make tea, so what would be the input? If you want to make uh, tea. tea, yeah. If you want to make tea, so you would require tea, tea leaf, right? So yeah, you, you would yeah, require water, water to boil the tea leaf in. So you would yeah. require water. You would require milk. You would require sugar. You know, we say that okay. These are the inputs. Now, what are the tools? Yeah. This would be a teapot. Tools would be a stove. Tools would be a spoon. Yeah. Tools would be a cup, and tool mm -hmm. would be a strainer. Mm -hmm. Okay, then what is the yeah. technique? The technique is like this. First you boil the tea leaf in the water. Then you add some sugar, mm -hmm. add some milk and strain it through mm -hmm. the strainer and pour it into the cup. So what do you get as yeah. an output? What you get as an output is something called beverage. Beverage is something we can drink. Mm -hmm. Can you directly consume yes. tea, tea leaf? No, we can't. Mm -hmm. Because uh, that's not something which is uh, palatable or pleasurable. So what we can have is a tea beverage. So what is the beverage? Beverage is a finished product. It is an output. So whenever we are doing tasks in, in projects, we apply processes. So processes, they have yeah. inputs, tools and techniques and they give us output. So these are the five process groups. So initiating authorizes the project. In planning, we plan yeah. the course of action to achieve objective. Right. So what needs to be yeah. done, how much people we need, how much stuff we need how much money is to be spent and what is the uh, sequence of the task. So that all happens under the planning. I believe that you are already exposed to all these things and I believe that now a lot of things they are falling in place for you and in execution we use the resources to carry out project tasks and monitoring and controlling we measure progress to identify variances. Now variances from what? Variances from the planned values. So if I say plan a task for 10 days so basically by fifth day it should be 50% complete. So you know if on the fifth day I check a physical completion status and if I find that it's not 50% complete. So what would I do? I would ask my team members those who are working on this particular task to speed up so that we can finish it within the planned time of yeah. 10 days. So that's a so that's a control. So monitoring is when you are comparing the uh, actual values with the planned values and controlling is when you are trying to bring down the actual values within the planned values by taking action so that is called controlling so that is monitoring and controlling and then we come to the closing which ensures structured project closer so where we wrap up all our project area we clean up the project uh, place we 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 give training to the end user we hand over it to the production or the operations okay 
and we yeah. do our closing documentations we write down invoices to get the final milestone payment and we make payments closing payments to all vendors so that's it so this is the interaction between the process groups so you have this process groups as the initiating and when it goes in the forward direction and after its completion is over so you have done the initial groundwork so what do you do after the initiating you start planning so once you have planned you start executing the work so when you are executing something so when you are doing the work so you would be monitoring and controlling at the same time so that your execution can happen within the plan sometimes from the execution we go to the planning because if there is a change or addition in the scope of the project we might need to do mm -hmm. it right so so this thing goes on for a while and once the execution is completed means all the work is done we go to the closing so this is what it looks mm -hmm. like now let's look at this graphic and if you look at this carefully you would realize that the area which is enclosed by the dotted lines is basically it is enclosing the total cost of the project total cost of the total mm -hmm. money spent on a project and it has been discovered basically it really doesn't matter what kind of project you are doing the nature of the projects they are very similar so almost like uh, you can say that uh, 70 to 72 percent of the money is spent in the execution mm -hmm. now if you make a mistake yeah. here say point number one or if you make a mistake here and if you make a mistake here where do you think the mistake would be the costliest um the execution part i mean yeah because you know by the time you reach here you have already applied a lot of yeah time and a lot of resources uh, a lot of time. resources yeah you have already spent you must have created something physically so here you, even if you're yeah. wrong in the planning you can do something on the drawing board and if you have certain mm -hmm. thought or an objective you can change your thought you can change your vision and you can then yeah. document it differently but once things go from the vision to the planning stage it requires a lot of many people to fix things and when it goes from planning to the execution so there are more number of people now they're applying the material now they're applying their man hours so you know so mm -hmm. this is something you got to keep it in mind so this is something which sensitizes you to the fact that it's always better to basically have a very clear vision a clear objective okay as compared to um, the so that you have a very good planning and then you should have a very good mm -hmm. plan a flawless plan before you can execute something so what is the idea how do you reach there so basically the idea is to do a very detailed project requirement analysis and if you look at the scope so what is the scope scope is the total work to be done now if the scope is very very well determined and well estimated we say the project is standing on a good foundation so the so the project scope is basically the foundation of a project it basically makes the project stable if it is stable so when you are carrying out the work there is minimal variation so that is the moral of the story so keep that in mind so make sure that you are taking care of all kinds of variations in the beginning not in the execution if there is a variation say in someone's thought let that thought process take another day so let that person write down the document very clearly regarding the objective of the project and let the planner do the whole planning in details down to the last nut and bolt so that you have a very accurate execution because at the execution time it's very costly to fix things okay so this is the thing now the knowledge areas are explained like this integration management mm -hmm. ensures integrity of all project management processes and activities in meeting the projects objectives scope management it ensures project yeah. contains all the work required to meet the objectives nothing more nothing less yeah. time management to ensure the project is completed within time constraint and you know mm -hmm. this is this is the greatest constraint that every project has then cost management to ensure the project can be completed within the approved budget because every project has mm -hmm. to be completed within a given cost or else the project would not be profitable okay so if you want the project to be good good from the organization point of view it should be prof uh, profitable as well 
So quality management, it ensures that the project meets the quality requirements of the stakeholders. Human resource management to organize, develop and manage the project team. Communications management, it ensures the management of project information from collection to disposition. And risk management, it uh, to increase the probability and impact of opportunities and, and decrease the probability and impact of threats. So basically, what is the risk? Risk is an uncertain event which basically can deflect you from achieving the objective. So you don't want that to happen. So you want to ward off all the threats to the work which is being done in the project. So you got to plan for that. You got to make sure that you understand and you can mitigate those way if they happen. And then procurement means getting all the stuff for the project from outside, like people, like services, like material. You know, that is the procurement mm -hmm. management. So you don't always have all the material or the resources within the project team. So they you got to procure a lot of things from out, outside the project team. And stakeholder management, it is the process required to identify the people, groups or organizations impacted by the project. So, you know, these are the ten knowledge areas and you have got professional responsibility and ethics and this is how they mm -hmm. are tabulated. So, as you can see here that the five process groups, they are on the top, they are in the column. Okay. And uh, they have top down total in the initiation as you are seeing two. There are two processes, develop mm -hmm. project charter and identify stakeholders. And in the planning, there are 24 as we are going down. Yeah. So, you know, the planning is then subdivided into 10 knowledge areas like mm -hmm. integration, scope, time, cost, quality, human resources, okay. communication, risk, procurement and then finally stakeholder management. So there are 24 yeah. process in mm -hmm. the planning group and then execution has got 8, monitoring and controlling has got 11 and closing has got 2. So all they add up to 47. So if you add it up from the top to bottom, so they add up uh, towards the top. So 2, 24, 8, mm -hmm. 8, 11, 2. And if you add it from left mm -hmm. to right, so you can see that integration management has got 1, 2, 3, into 5, into 7, and 1, 8 processes. So scope has got mm -hmm. 4 plus 2, 6 processes. Time management has got, uh, you can see, seven processes. So you would notice that yeah. not all the knowledge areas, they have processes in all the process groups. But integration management is the one which has got uh, processes in every process group. Right. So just keep that in mind. So that's a special one. Okay. Now project management uh, oh. office. Do you have a PMO, project management office? Mm -hmm. So what does the project management uh, of the office do? It facilitates accomplishment of strategic goals. It helps in um, the basically planning of the projects by the project management teams. It helps mm -hmm. determine the training requirement. It helps coaching. It helps in mentoring. It helps in monitoring of the various projects which are happening. And it works by enhancing competencies of the organizational project management community and enhances the organizational project management maturity. So that is the PMO. Now, now PMO supports the project manager in various ways. It helps in sharing and optimizing resources between multiple projects. It helps in uh, identifying and developing project management methodologies, best practice and standards, then coaching, mentoring, training and uh, oversight, then monitoring compliance with the project management standards and policies through project audits, coordinating communication across projects. PMOs create value through standardization, for example, by process, mm -hmm. by system, by knowledge, retention, and consulting. So this is a sample PMO governance in any uh, project. So this is for a software organization. So PMOs, they help in the project mm -hmm. management by helping you with filling of the project initiation form. Then they provide you the project procedures. Then they will provide you in help in the project planning, then help you in the project status and uh, project review documents and project sign off to help you get the uh, sign offs. So you know these are the things that the PMO they help you in. 
and in the design development they might help you with system requirement specification database design in the change management they help you with the change tracker traceability metrics and quality assurance they can help you with the code review checklist, the defect report, etc. So this is the PMO governance. Now we come to the question and answers. So you know, I am basically showing you certain sample questions. So basically mm -hmm. these sample questions are the same that would appear in your uh, exam. So it's you won't yeah. get the same questions basically. So but you would get the same kind or same type of questions. So this is the format. Mm -hmm. The format is basically the question is mentioned and you will have uh, four options to choose from so you choose only one only one is selectable the correct one is yes. the one so that is based upon the PMI process so one more thing PMI is basically testing you for their knowledge of uh, mm -hmm. how much you have absorbed the PMI processes it really doesn't matter that how much experience you have or how much general management skills you have. Basically, you would be evaluated for the fact that you have learned the PMI process. Okay, mm -hmm. now let me explain to you the first question. If you look at that the project manager is making sure that the product. Okay, now what is a product? What is a product? So do you get a product at the uh, beginning or at the end? Yeah. Product is a sum total of all the deliverables. Right. Mm -hmm. So can you get the product when you I I initiate the project? Uh, no, I think you can monitoring or. Um, oh, so control. when you are planning, so when can you get a product when you are planning? Uh, no, because you are still planning. No. You 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 haven't done anything. You you haven't made anything. Can you get the product when you are yeah. doing monitoring and controlling? No, basically uh, when you are monitoring and controlling, no. you are still having some work to yet to be completed. If some work is still happening, how can you get the product? So you rule this. Oh, okay. What's the point? So you know you if you are looking at the product it means that you are in the closing process group uh -huh. so what the project manager is doing yeah. he is making sure that before he uh, hands over the product to the client he should have a last minute look at the product so when he looks at the product mm -hmm. so which process group he is in he has already it means that he has crossed over the initiating planning monitoring controlling execution and he is closing mm -hmm. he is going to close the project so before he closes the project, he wants to make sure that it is coming up as per the plan, okay, to meet the requirement yeah. of the customer. So he is in the closing. So okay, which of the following is an output of the initiating process group? So when you take um, the initiating, so what do you get as an output? Project charter. Yes. So now let me tell you what is a charter. Charter is a formal permission to do a project keep mm -hmm. in mind so why do you need this because you do not own the resources of the organization right if you want to mm -hmm. use the people's time if you want to use the equipment if you want to use the material so PMI says that you should have a formal permission to use the resources yeah. of an organization to do the project so the project top management should write a charter for you and then give it to you that these are the objectives and we want you to achieve mm -hmm. this objective within this uh, limit of uh, cost and time and we give you the permission to use it in this fashion so that is the project charter so the project charter is the output now we go to the next screen mm -hmm. Who is in control of the project during the project planning phase? Project manager. Yeah, just keep in mind project manager is the owner of the project and he is always in control. Right, so you got it right. So a high level mm -hmm. project schedule. Now it says high level. So where you are mm -hmm. when it is high level. Are, are you in closing? No. 
Okay. Are you in monitoring and control? Um, no. Because you are not high level. Are you in planning? Uh, it says just determined. Uh, it should be initiating. Absolutely. So you are thinking PMI. Very good. So basically when you are doing planning, you know, you have drilled down to the last nut and bolt. Keep in mind. Yeah. In, in planning. Yeah. So initiating means that you are doing initial groundwork. So you are just talking mm -hmm. to the various top level stakeholders. So they are just trying to, I mean, achieve something. They will be talking of the high level only. So we so suppose if yeah. we, they are talking about, say, solving the uh, traffic congestion of a city. So they wouldn't be talking nuts yeah. and bolts. So they would be talking in terms of whether we should have, or we should have more underpasses, whether we should have more flyovers or whether we should add more trains into the already existing metro yeah. network. Okay. So, you know, they would be initiating high level. Okay. So after the high level, yeah. what happens? You go to the low level. So which is planning, right? So you got it right. So you are going in the right direction. So which is not characteristic of, of a project. What is not characteristic of a project? Uh, repetitive. Repetitive, yes. So repetitive is the selectable answer. Projects, they create unique. Projects are temporary in nature. It creates a product. Yeah. But projects are not repetitive yeah. because they are not operations. Yeah. You are the project of yeah. XYZ consultant, project team members of finance and HR, team member report to finance and HR. So, you know, this is something that you don't need. Basically, it's about the structure mm -hmm. of the organization. This won't be part of the CAPM. So we are sk skipping okay. this question. Okay, so yeah. which is not a knowledge area of the PM box? Did we have something like legal no. management? No. We didn't have. So this is the selectable yeah. answer. So this is not part of a yeah. uh, knowledge yeah. area. So which of the following statement depicts a project? What looks like a project to mm -hmm. you? Which one? Um. Um, troubleshooting server for a long issue. So which one would be that? A, B, C, D? Uh, C. And what about B? Um, See, the projects are not repeated. Yeah. Um, I think because um, B is like depicting it and like operation or if you, something. If, 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 you, if you look at the troubleshooting, you know, you could be doing troubleshooting uh, every day. But yeah. if you are doing this, upgrading finance application from Unix environment to Microsoft. Uh, would you do it uh, every time? No, you would do it only once. So that would that that is here you have an objective to achieve. Right. So that is what is a project. Okay. So don't expect that all the answers would come right turn right in the beginning. So you are learning, so, yeah. so that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Now, if I talk about the process groups, I believe that these are very logical and you are already aware of this by your work experience. Yeah. So what would you do in the beginning? What would you do next? So in the beginning, you would be doing what? Executing. Uh, B is the answer. Yes, in the beginning you would initiate, then you would plan, you would execute, then yeah. of course when you are executing you would be pointing and controlling and then find finally closing the project. So that looks good. Yeah. So you are appointed team member in a project I, so you don't need this. So that's good. So that's mm -hmm. about the CAPM thing. So and mm -hmm. now you remember all the five process group. Now what about the 10 knowledge areas, how you would sort it out? 
Okay, now let me tell you an interesting story. How to remember all the ten knowledge areas? Like if I say integration mm-hmm. management, scope management, cost management, time management, quality management. Okay, then human resource management, communication management, risk management, procurement management, stakeholder. You know they are in a sequence, and there are ten of them. So now let me tell you a little bit of an interesting story. The story goes like this: uh, that uh, you have been asked to cook chicken. Okay, now your family member, yeah. maybe your mother or maybe your husband, you have been told that how to make the chicken, but you have been given a top level ins- instruction or top level caution that mm-hmm. see when you are cooking the chicken, you have to continuously stir it. Okay, or else the gravy mm-hmm. will stick to the pan. Okay, it will burn. So you know this is what you say to yourself: mm-hmm. I stir the chicken quickly or help clean ruined pan. I stir the chicken mm-hmm. quickly or help clean ruined pan. So, can you please write mm-hmm. it down uh, in your notepad or something? This sentence: I stir. So, yeah. uh, let me put this into the text box. Just see what I am writing into yeah. the text box. You see the sentence, so you can visualize yourself cooking the chicken, and basically you remind yourself. I stir the chicken quickly or help clean ruined pan. Yeah. Okay. So you keep this sentence with you. Now, if you look at the first letter, first letter. What is the first letter in this sentence? First I. one. I. I. So does it remind you of something? In the um. uh, knowledge area. Which is on the left side? That is the rows, not the column. Column would be on the top. That is the initiating planning. So that you have all uh, already told. So that you all know about. Now I'm talking about the I, yeah. which is in the rows. So what is the first I, which is in the rows? Uh, management dash management. I management. I. Something which keeps the pro uh, the project uniform. Uh, um, integration, you remember? Integrity. Uh, I for no. integration. So now comes the next word. So S S. Does it remind you of something? Um. S does it remind you of uh, a knowledge area management? Uh, S for strategy planning. Strategy. S for scope. Scope, you know what is uh, scope? Scope is the total work which to be done in the project. So yeah, scope yeah. management is something that you can remind yourself from the letter yeah. S. I, okay, I stir the chicken. So when you say the, so what is the first letter that you get? T. Time. Time management. Yes, very good. And yes. stir the chicken. Chicken gives you C. So what does C remind you of? Cost. Cost management. Yes, very good. Quickly. Quickly gives mm-hmm. you Q. So what does Q remind you of? Quality. Quality and or or you can say that is a connecting word. You can ignore it. Then you go to the help. Yeah. Help is H. So, what does H remind you of? Um, H. Um. People. So, what are people termed as in PMI's term? Um, what kind uh, of resources are people? Uh, It starts with it. It shouldn't be too difficult. Make a guess. Mm. People are also called uh, human. Don't know. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
human resources. So H reminds you of human resources management. And what else would you manage after that? Clean. Clean gives you the letter C. Once again C. So one C is the cost management. The uh, other C is pertaining to um. talking to people, writing to people. Communication. Communications management, yes, absolutely right. Ruined, R, does it remind you of something? Something going bad? Risk. 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 So you, you want to manage the risk on the project. And then yeah. pen, pen gives you P. So what does P pertain to? Oh. To get Procurement. stuff. Procurement. Now that makes nine. So you know, there is the tenth one. So what's happening here? Just, just to visualize the story goes like this. I stir the uh, chicken quickly or help clean ruined pan. Yeah. You know then what happens while you were cooking the chicken, you get a phone call. Okay, and you get busy with the phone call and suddenly you realize that you didn't stir the pan for long. Then you say, oh shit. You exclaim. Okay, you realize yeah. your mistake. So that gives you S. So what do you do with that S? So what does... Stakeholder. Stakeholders. So stakeholders are the people, those who are impacted by the outcome of the project, those who are associated with the project. Okay, so you, your team members, your execution team members, your business associates, your vendors, your uh, program manager, portfolio manager, your sponsor, yeah. your client. So you know all these mm -hmm. people, they are stakeholders because they are affected by the negative or positive outcome of the project. Right, so stakeholder mm -hmm. management is something that you also need to take care of as a project manager. So that reminds you of 10 knowledge a a areas. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. So the complete sentence would be like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that makes it yeah. 10 knowledge areas. So I believe that it's not very difficult to remember this sentence because once this sentence is in place, so you can always pull up mm -hmm. the knowledge area name from your memory, isn't it? Yeah. Great. So I hope uh, you are enjoying it as well. Okay. So yeah, so what comes next? Okay. You can read this uh, cartoon later. So we come to the integrity. That is the in integration management. So we'll move through this quickly. So you know, basically, uh, let me make sure that you understand the whole, the top level of it. It is to ensure that various elements of a project are properly consolidated, coordinated, integrated to ensure the successful completion of the project. Now let me show you a graphic here. Now the graphic is like this. So if you want to do a project, so you know, basically you got to understand that what is the expectation of the stakeholder, what are their needs and what you got to do for achieving their satisfaction. So these are the people. Sometimes you are able to meet the people directly. Suppose if you are a consultant, if I'm doing a software, you know, I got the opportunity to meet people. But suppose if you're solving a problem in a city, then you come up with a solution that a particular uh, crossing should be replaced with a flyover. So you cannot talk to all the people, but definitely you would like to do a survey. So you need to know what is the stakeholder needs and expectations. So basically, once you have determined the stakeholder needs and expectations, so you have a very good idea what needs to be done. So what needs to be done is nothing but work. So what is the work in a project? Scope management, right? Isn't it? So if you have a well-defined scope, can you have a very well defined estimate of time from the scope? Can yes. you? Yes, of course. Yeah. I know all each and every task in my project. So, you know, I would be mm -hmm. in a very good position to determine <laughs> the estimate of time. Now, if you can determine the estimate of time and you have very well defined this work to be done in the project, can you estimate the cost of the project? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because you would know how much resources are to be applied and the cost is nothing but the cost of applying the resources on a project, isn't it? So you would have very good idea of the cost management and if you have very good uh, scope time and cost management, what, don't you think you would be able to achieve the quality of the project? Quality. 
okay great uh, so you would be able to achieve yeah. the quality of the project yeah. so that would be the core function now these are called the core function i say i want to do the scope time cost and quality management and these are the yeah. core functions and basically to do this functionality is i need the help from human resource i need people i need to communicate mm -hmm. with all my stakeholders i need to minimize my uncertain events like risk which can hamper my project work so i do risk management i need to procure stuff for the project for the raw material for the people okay i need to procure and for the people those who are stakeholder part of the project so i need to manage them too so you know these are the two sides of the project so they are held together by what is called the integration management so that's where the integration management fits in now i'm going to ask you a question okay. here just look at this very carefully suppose mm -hmm. if uh, i um, say for example uh, the client cuts down on the time okay initially the client said that you can do this project in six months then yeah. he says that you will have to finish the project in five months so where else do you think will be the impact um should, um the time management yeah if the time is reduced from six months to five months will it have an impact on the cost uh, yeah, cost and also quality. Will it have an impact on uh, the risk? Oh, resource, I mean, uh, human resource management. Will it have an impact on the human resources? Yeah. I might need more people if I have to do the whole work. And will it have an impact on the yeah. scope? Now there are two possibilities. One is that I get more people to do the work. So definitely I can mm -hmm. keep the scope as same but my cost might go up. But suppose if the client says no I have reduced the time but I will not increase the amount of money. So then what happens? I might have to mm -hmm. cut down on the scope. Why? Because I cannot do all the work in the given time. So. Yeah. I can basically um, prioritize okay so that what is to be done so you know all these things they have an impact on each each, each other if there is an impact on cost there is an impact on the rest of the knowledge area so who keeps it integral that is integration management so this is what is all about integration management now mm -hmm. in every organization there are organization process assets and what is an asset assets are say your plans policies procedures guidelines now let me explain to you do you know coke's formula how to make the coke which is the most i mean one of the most popular drink coca cola mm -hmm. is there on is it there um, on the in internet can you google it out uh, no no you can't because you know it's an asset why it is an asset? Because yeah. it helps them create the value, that is the stuff for which people would be willing to pay money okay, to drink it. Mm -hmm. So that is an organization mm -hmm. process asset. So similarly, every organization has a process which is called an asset, which creates the products and gets something done within the organization. So these are plans, policies, procedure, guidelines, process assets also include organization knowledge bases such as lesson learned and historical mm -hmm. information. like. Uh, if there is a project team which made a mistake so you know they would put it into the lessons learned so once they put it into the lessons learned then what happens the future teams they get better isn't it future team they won't repeat the mistakes okay now what is an environmental factor enterprise environmental factor it's like this suppose if your organization is using excel to do the scheduling and there is another organization which is using a project management software so where do you think the project has a greater chances of uh, being successful being finished on time um. the environment or um, um, the risk I mean the resources they have 
Yes. So basically, you know, the environment factor which has been created by an organization by providing any kind of resources which enhances or improves or which smoothens out the project work is called an environment factor. So that could be the organizational culture, structure, infrastructure, existing resources, commercial databases, market conditions or project management software. So, you know, all these, they add up to the success of the project. So these are called the environmental factor. Now, what is commercial databases? For example, if you want to do the estimation, say you are working in a construction company, you want to do an estimation of the task, how much resources or material does it require? Now, you know, there could be certain databases which are commercially available, which can basically uh, take the task list and they can provide you the estimate of the materials because these are determined internationally. So, you know, these are called the environmental factors. They help the project. Now, in every project, the information flows in three ways. Now, look at this. First is the data. Then it becomes mm -hmm. information. Then it becomes a report. Now, let me explain this to you that what is the meaning of data? Suppose if you take the temperature of a person, okay, so the reading comes on the thermometer. So, you would spell out a figure. Suppose if you spell out, say, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, okay. Now, when you say 100 degrees, so what is it? 100. Oh, sorry, I said... It's a data. It's a data. Now, when does it become in information when you interpret it? So, what is your interpretation of 100 degree Fahrenheit body temperature? I, I mean, I can see anything from the screen. Yeah, I have just removed it for a while. So, you don't have to look at the screen. You just have to... Uh, All right. uh, okay. Okay, I'll just show you the screen in a while. So, it will make more sense to you. So, at this point, uh, just tell me that what is your interpretation of the 100 degrees Fahrenheit? If a person is having 100 degrees Fahrenheit body temperature, is it normal or is the person sick? Uh, sick. Yes, you know, this is information. Do you get the point? So when I say yeah. 100 degree, it is a figure in number. Now, it doesn't mean yes. anything to a lot of people if they do not understand medicine. Now, since you know yes. that the normal body temperature of a person is 98.6 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, if it is Seconds. more than that, yes. so the person is sick. Yes. So, that is information. Now, what comes next mm -hmm. after the information comes? The report. So, you take this person to the doctor. The doctor examines further and he writes down a prescription and he writes down a certain do's and don'ts for the person. So, you know, what is that? So, that is the report. So, report is detailed analysis of the data. Now, what is data? So, data is the figures. Now, what is the information? Information is the interpretation. Like in a project, we have start date, finish date. We have the number of change requests, number of defects. Now, you know, these are just figures. They don't mean anything unless we have something to compare against. When I compare the start date, actual start date against a actual plan date, okay, then I get a variance and I when I interpret the variance and I get the status. So, which I say, okay, the task is on time, the task is late, the task is earlier, okay. So, that is the information. So, when I write down status reports, memos, justification, information notes, so that becomes reports. So, make sure that you understand data information and report. So, data is something which is figures. Information is something you just interpret the status and report is something when you detail out something. Right. So, that's it. I hope you are seeing these three words in in a new way. I hope this is interesting. Data, information and report. Okay. I believe that now you can use these words better. Okay. Great. Now, now in the in integ integration, Mm, so, this is how the processes they are divided. So, which you have already seen in the table. So, in the initiating, mm -hmm. we have these processes, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling. In monitoring control project, we perform integrated chain control. Now, I would like to draw your attention to this one. 
the one that I circled. When you are monitoring and controlling project work, what does it mean? It means that you are comparing the actual work done. <laughs> now, when you are actually doing the work, three data points are generated. What are they? Actual time taken, actual cost taken, and actual work effort. So when you do this, so you get certain data points. Now, how to how to con how to compare? So basically, you compare it against the planned time, the time which you had planned originally to do the task within a certain time period. And then you compare it with the planned cost. Then you compare it with the planned planned what? Work effort. Right, so that is monitor and control project work. Now, when you perform integrated change control, so basically you know what is happening. If you find something going out of the way in any of the knowledge area, you also look for any impact on the rest of the knowledge area and you document it. So that is about perform integrated change control. If there is any integrity to be taken care of, so you do this process. And in the closing, you close the project or the phase. Right. So closing the project or a phase means that in bigger projects, so say long term projects, say five year projects, six year projects, we chop up the project into very bigger pieces which we call as phase and we make sure that each of the phase is having all the processes applied so that we get a proper output. So once we get a proper output, so you know this output is passed on as an input to the next phase. But when we are doing some small project, so if I am doing a one year project or two year project, I would directly close the project itself. And in a multi-phase project, I would close the phase so that the phase is basically providing a proper output which can be used as an input for the next phase of the project. Right. So that's what is the closing about. Okay. Now, this is the project charter. So basically, uh, the development of project charter is the formal authorization of existence of the project. Now, keep in mind one thing. When the project is in someone's mind, it's a concept. It's not a project. You uh, understand? The project is in someone's mind. It's a concept. When the project is formally authorized via a document so that is the project so there is a difference between a concept and a project so that is according to the PMI if there is a formal permission given to achieve an objective so you have it mm -hmm. right and it provides the project manager with the authority to apply organizational resources to project activities so authority authority is very important because the project manager is not the business owner so he needs an authority to use the resources. So the organization might be having hundreds of equipments, hundreds of people, those who are working at the execution level, lot of materials lying around. So you need an authorization from the top business owner. So, okay, this is what I want you to achieve and these are the authorization rights. You have to use the resources. So once you have this right, so where do you get this? So you get this in a charter so that is the utility of a charter now these are the ways to develop the project charter so which is not required in case mm -hmm. of the CAPM so in CAPM what you need to know that before initiating a project you need to understand the need and demand of a project you need to do feasibility study and you got to select a project now why do we do this thing now let me tell you one thing see are you working in a consulting organization or you are doing your own projects, internal projects? Um, external project. Okay, so you are doing the project basically upon the request of a client. Is, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, now let me tell you. For example, I am working in a software company. Okay. And a client comes to me and client says, look, uh, I want you to make a, an e-commerce shopping website for me. Now, you know, mm -hmm. the client would basically do a feasibility study. Is it fe feasible for him to sell? 
what is the need of the e-commerce what is the demand of the items to be sold through the e e-commerce platform so you would so he, you know he would do a lot of uh, I mean process to make sure that this project is pro pro profitable and and on top of that he comes to me I make sure that the project is profitable for me also but for me his objective is not my objective so what is the objective of the client to sell um, to sell to sell, yeah. to sell through the e-commerce e but is that my objective no what is my objective um, to finish the website to finish yeah. the website yes to create the website and profitably but yeah. if the website is handed over to the client whether the client makes a profit or a loss will will that be your or my concern no not at all we are not concerned so you know what needs to be done beforehand before you undertake a successful project so you need to do a feasibility study so feasibility study will ensure that the project is profitable right you got to do this so if you are going to do your mm -hmm. own project suppose if you are a product based company suppose if you want to make a new model of a mobile phone so won't you look at need and demand <laughs> isn't it or would you make a mobile phone just out of whims and fancies don't you think that you would be mm -hmm. doing some sort of research to look at the need and demand ah. for a particular feature or a particular configuration of a mobile phone no no yes you would you wouldn't make a mobile phone if it is not feasible to sell it in the market because you are doing your own ah, project okay. okay suppose if you are a good media and entertainment company now you have got the choices of two three projects whether you should start a water resort water park or a five star hotel or a five screen theater so don't you think that you would look at the need and demand Mm -hmm. isn't it so you would basically select the project which is most profitable where your return on interest is guaranteed where your investment is safe okay so where you can recover your investment in the minimum or the shortest possible time mm -hmm. wouldn't you do it so that is the that that is the exercise that you would be doing before a project so have you heard of expert judgment what is an expert judgment not yet expert judgment is basically you know when you have experience so when you have experience you have a lot of understanding about how a work is to be done how it is to be done right okay so that puts you in a position to determine things to make them go in the right direction so where does the expert judgment is taken by the team see team member have expert judgment of their own project manager plus team and if you want you can have expert judgment from the senior management of the company mm -hmm. and then if you wish you can have expert judgment from an appropriate unit within the organization mm. and if you wish you can have uh, expert judgment uh, from the project stakeholders including the customers and and you yes. can have expert judgment from the consultants right mm -hmm. and who else can give you an ex ex expert judgment industry groups mm -hmm. subject matter experts yeah, can give you an ex expert judgment yeah. And the project management office can also give an expert judgment. Okay, so basically you would make sure that if you are going to undertake a project, so that should be a successful one, right? So expert judgment basically comes from your experience, your knowledge, your qualification, your domain expertise. You know, all those things put together gives you an ability to judge the things right to do the things right to plan the things right and to estimate the things right 
so so you know that is what is termed as an expert judgment okay so you need expert judgment in selecting the project does it make sense yeah so just keep in mind this term and what does it mean and then you are also going to measure the benefits that if you have got to do a selection between a choice between two or multiple projects so you got to measure the benefits so which is more beneficial so you would do things like uh, you would look at compare project for their benefits that which is more beneficial whether i should launch a mobile phone or i should launch a laptop so this is called comparative approach it involves scoring based upon cost so basically you would put more score to a project where the cost is less and the risk is less and murder boards are basically doing research on the projects to make sure that the projects are feasible ones so that once started so you wouldn't need to stop them midway so that is the murder board and where you have pros and cons of the project this uh, i mean discussed and compared and you settle with something that works and then you have payback period so payback period means that what is the minimum time in which your initial investment would be returned to you then cost benefit analysis basically tells you that how much money you would invest and what is the benefit that you would have okay like i would do a cost benefit analysis on the city transport so i have the options one option is that i have I go for the metro. One option is that I go for tram system. One option is that I make lots of flyovers. Another option is that I have, say, some sort of, uh, say, um, monorail system. Okay, so you know there is a cost and there is a benefit. So then I look at the one where the cost is the least and the benefit is the most. So I would do cost benefit analysis. Then there are scoring models there. I would apply scores and net present value tells the value of money, uh, tomorrow's money in today's term. Then there is internal rate of return which tells you that what is the year on year return from the business. As you are investing the initial principal into the and return into the business and then the business returns you more money and you put it back into the business, the business expands to give you more returns. So you know that adds up. So that is called the internal rate of return. So that is the benefit measurement model. And mathematical model it involves mathematical formulas to predict success rate. And this is also called constraint optimization. So you just got to keep this in mind, not to worry too much. And you don't need this here. So you got to understand what is there in the project charter. In the project charter, there is high level objective and summary yeah. milestone schedule and project durations and summary budget so basically you know if you are going to give the project manager something to achieve so you got to tell him that what is the achievement after doing this project and what are the milestones so do you understand milestones have you heard of the milestones yeah no yeah yes so why uh, do you have yes. milestones in a project i'm sorry are asking why or what yeah what is that why why do you um, think there are milestones in a project because you have to check um, whether the process uh, the progress is going all right or um, make sure that um, we deliver um, um, the um, correct uh, project outcomes or goals of the project. Okay. So let me explain this to you with a small little, yeah. Uh, yeah, you are nearly there. Let me make it even much more clearer. See, the milestone is like this. Mm -hmm. Suppose a client comes to you and uh, he wants you to uh, build a shopping mall. You are a construction company and you are the CEO of the construction company and client says, look, can you build a shopping mall for me? Okay. So then what would you say? You would say, okay, fine. Yes, I can do it. Tell me the details of it. He says, look, the shopping mall is to have five stories. And uh, these are the features. And this is the area to be covered. And this is all that I want in this. Okay. Now, what do you do? Um, uh, what do you do? You give an estimate. You, you, 
you tell him that it's going to cost you say 500 million dollars and uh, he says fine so he says when you are going to start you you tell him that when you make an upfront payment of 500 million dollar i can start the work what do you say 500 million dollar upfront now do you think uh, mm -hmm. it will be acceptable to the client to pay you 500 million dollar upfront before starting the project no no yes absolutely right now let me tell you, ask you another question now what does the client say to you that why don't you do the entire project and then i will pay you at the end so what would be your answer yes or no 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 now tell me that how to do business um you can pay according to the project milestone yes. the or the yes now what is the milestone well let me tell you how in, this is how you and your client agree you basically agree that let us divide the payment into five parts because there are five deliverables so what are the five deliverables so they are listed like this the first deliverable is the ground floor the second deliverable is the first floor the third deliverable is the second floor the fourth deliverable is the third floor and the fifth deliverable is the fourth floor so you have got five deliverables right so once you have the five deliverables so basically you link the chopped up payments with that you say that okay when i deliver you the ground floor you pay me 100 million dollars but how do you sign up mm -hmm. the project you say that out of this first 100 million dollar give me 20 million dollar as a down payment so that i can be sure that you want me to do something for you you want to take my services client says okay fine i will give you 20 million dollar as a down payment okay so you you take this 20 million dollar and you become sure that the client wants your services and you start resource mobilization so once you have started the resource mobilization then what happens that you do the work and finish it on time so you know every milestone has a agreed upon time and deliverable it's not about the entire project even within the project you have time constraints at milestones so he says i want the ground floor within the next six months you say fine so you put a date on that so when you deliver him the complete ground floor with acceptance so he pays you the balance 80 million dollars so that adds up to 100 million dollars of the first payment so that is the milestone so the major milestones they are linked to the deliverable okay keep that in mind and these are mentioned in the project agreements that are signed up with the clients this is a normal thing yeah. and project manager should be aware of this thing and it is mentioned in the charter so that he is basically aware of it and he can take care of it so summary milestone schedule and project duty so what is the schedule so you know when you use the word schedule it means that a date right some date is involved summary budget means the top level budget then high level risk if known that what can affect the project what can ail the project during the project execution then security mm -hmm. criteria or metrics so what is the criteria for security and and uh, I mean the success criteria what is success criteria now the thing is that when you are building something you got to evaluate that what is the functional level okay now the functional level is something which you can predetermine what is the success criteria of the pulse polio project if an if a country is undertaking this project what is the success criteria the success criteria is that after a period of time or a predetermined period of time no child should be found having the polio virus okay so that is the success criteria so you can set a success criteria for your project also which will be mentioned in the charter document then who are the key decision makers those who signed up the project and uh, yeah. then who is the assigned project manager and what is the authority level of the project manager can he use the resources up to this point up to this value so that is the authority level 
and name and responsibility of the person authorizing the charter. Those who are going to authorize the charter, what are their names and responsibilities so that in the future the project manager can have a clear decision. Now why do you need this in the charter? Now see this, say down the line a senior management person comes to you and he wants you to change something in the project. So would you do it? No, you wouldn't do it. So what would you do? You will look at your charter. If his name is mm -hmm. not included in the key stakeholder, that is the decision maker, you wouldn't do any change. You would politely say, sir, can you please go and meet any or one of these people? What? Okay, these are the key decision makers. Can you please go and meet them and ask them for any change in the project? Okay, so these are the key decision makers. So that is why we have the name of the key stakeholders included as part of the charter. So that no other person can come in and make the changes in the project. What is the point? So, now we go to the next, we develop the project management plan. Basically it's a plan which is encompassing the entire knowledge area. So you know it lists all the work to be done in each of the knowledge areas one by one, one by one and which is necessary to define, integrate and coordinate all subsidiary plans. Now what does the project management plan do? It keeps the project management team focused on the work of the project to be done in details but in details it tells the details see if I want to do the time management so I got to plan it out that the how time will be estimated how time will be measured how the time will be time sheet will be captured what kind of software will be used what kind of a, a algorithm will be used for the time estimation who are the people responsible what are their rules and regulations in maintaining the time status of the project Okay, so all this will go into the project management plan. Like in the project management plan, there will be a section within the document, say cost management. So you would describe in the beginning how the cost will be calculated, what will be the estimation, what are the sources of cost estimation data, what are the rules, regulations, uh, procedures, standards which are applicable on the estimation of the cost and what are the roles and responsibilities of various people involved in cost estimation. No, then what is the benefit of this PMP document? The benefit of the PMP document is that it serves as a guidance throughout the project. Now just imagine this. So imagine that the project is six year long. Okay. After third year, the project manager changes. Do you think there should be change in the project? Um, maybe change in the scope. No, if the project manager changes, will there be change in the scope? No, not at all. The project will continue on its original scope. But how will it happen? First of all, the project manager to project manager, knowledge transfer will happen and then what? So you mean um, it's going to be like still carrying on the project. Yeah. So basically the project will have a very long time, say six years, seven years. So a lot of people will come into okay. the project. A lot of people will come and leave the project. See, now let me explain to you with a small little example. Suppose if you are doing a software project. Now there is a role this role is called the quality tester. Would you uh, bring in this guy in the beginning? Quality tester. We are into the initiating phase of the project. Will you bring in this guy? Um, yeah. But what will he test if he comes in the beginning? Nothing much. So you plan that this guy will come in the middle of the project when he has something to test and look at. Something to look at and test. So okay, in the software, do you take the software UI designer in the beginning or at the end? User interface designer. 
from the user interface. Yeah, tell me. Um, uh, user interface designer would be taken in the beginning. So once the interfaces are designed, they are handed over to the development team and the user interface designer leaves the team. So it's no, uh, it's of, it's not of much use, usually, for him to continue being part of the team. So he can move on to another project, right? So you know, different people will come and different people will join the project. They will work on the project mm -hmm. for some time and they will, they will leave the project. Now, do you think because of people coming and going, there should be uh, unnecessary changes in the project? Yeah. Yes or no? Uh, yeah. Uh, project should change. There should be change in scope. Do you think that if people come and join the project, new set of people, there should be change in objective or scope of the project? Um, it really depends on what people are leaving the team. See, whatever people are leaving the team, they are replacing with exactly the same skill and experience. But do you think that the project should mm. change? So you mean it shouldn't be changed? They shouldn't change basically, you know, because the project's objective is enshrined in the charter. So it really doesn't matter. If the same sort of people, if they leave the project, okay, midway, yeah. that shouldn't mean that the project is out of control. How do you keep the project in control? Basically ensuring uniformity. How do you ensure uniformity? Mm -hmm. By writing a project management plan. So every person who comes and joins the project team, he would go through this plan. He would look at what has been planned in the time management, what has been planned in the cost management, what has been planned in the quality management, what standards, rules, regulations, procedure have been adopted yeah. in this project. So throughout the project, many, many people will come and they will leave the project, but the project would remain constant. It will constantly move on towards its goal. That is the achievement of the objective as listed or as enshrined in the charter. Isn't it a good thing that despite changing of the people, the objective of the project should be yes. achieved? Right yes. or wrong? Yes. Yes. Now I believe yes. that you have got the point. So that's why we need this project yes. management plan document. So mm -hmm. this document helps all the people remain focused. So who makes this document? The initial project manager. He makes this document mm -hmm. along with the initial set of the team members and he continues to update maybe very little during the course of the project if there are any major changes so there will be major update otherwise it remains constant it continues to guide the team throughout the project life cycle so isn't it wonderful if at the end of the sixth year the project manager changes mm -hmm. in the middle but the objective is still uh, achieved isn't yes, it good? Yeah. Isn't it desirable? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's why we need the project management plan document. Okay, because the organization is now process based, not people based. But if it is a people based organization, then what happens? If a person leaves, so the project fails because the key person is left. So the next person doesn't know what to do, where to start from. Okay, where to take over from. So that can have a failure of the project. So that's why we need project management plan. So these are the input tool and technique. You can go through it in the slide. I'll share the slide with you right now after this, after yeah. the timing. So components of the yeah. project management plan are project scope management. So you define how the scope will be defined, what documentation standards will be used, how it will be uh, changed. Okay who are the people authorized to change it, if it is needed to be changed, how do we keep the scope stable, okay. Then schedule management plan, how we estimate the time, cost management plan would tell that how the money will be managed, how the cost will be kept within the budget and quality would be 
maintained. You know, all these would be described in the project management plan. So staffing, you know, staffing management yeah. plan, do you think that the project has uh, a maximum number of people at all the times? No. When the project has maximum number of people? When it is in the execution phase, isn't it? So where people are doing the work, which has been planned out. So you would need, you would use the maximum number of resources there. Right. So that the staffing management plan would tell that. Okay. Communication management plan would tell that which stakeholder needs what kind of communication. Someone requires a meeting, someone requires a fax, someone requires an email report. Okay. Then we have a, a stakeholder management plan that how do we manage the people. Then risk management plan tells us how the risk will be managed. And then the procurement management plan tells us the procurement. Okay, then this milestone mm -hmm. list tells us that what are the milestones in the project. Resource calendar tells us that what resources are coming in at which dates. Right, so resource calendar would tell us that oh, when is the user interface designer joining and till how many days this person is working. And when this person is leaving the project after completing the project work. When is the data or the uh, tester joining? Till what time is the tester remaining? Okay. And then we come to the schedule cost and quality baseline. So what is the baseline? Baseline is something that we compare against. So there are three things which we are ready to compare against. What are they? Time, yeah. cost, quality, cost. work effort. Work. So, so this should be also documented so that when we are doing the work, so we can compare and make sure that we are going as per the plan. If you have nothing to compare against, we just can't transact. So you know, there are baselines in this world. Like if I say one meter, so one meter is the same for you and for me, isn't it? The length of one meter. So how many centimeters does one meter have? 100. 100. So that's your part of the world. In my part of the world, it is 100. And how many milli mm -hmm. millimeter does a one meter have? 10. Thousand, yes. Uh, one meter. Yeah, within thousand, yeah. thousand, yeah, right. So, you know, we understand the same thing. So, because of the same baselines. So, where is this baseline? Okay, so this baseline is basically maintained at in some laboratory. So, you know, the original one meter which was devised or it was cut up in 1870, it's been kept in a uh, laboratory in a controlled temperature and uh, moisture condition. Right, so all the scales which have been built so they were measured up against this original one meter, they were cut up and they were sent back. That okay, we have cut your tool by this uh, one meter caliber and uh, basically you will be maintaining this one meter of length. So that is the baseline. Yeah. So if I say one liter, would it be different from yours? No, it would be. It would mean the same volume of liquid, right? So there's a baseline to compare against. Like if I say the time. So you know, people say GMT time instead of telling their standard time. So what is GMT? So it is a baseline. It is a baseline of a time. So if I say right now the GMT time in India is this much. So you know, it won't be very difficult for you to understand that what is the time that I'm talking about. Okay. So we have baseline. So similarly, who makes the baseline for a project? Who makes the baseline for a project? Um, the project manager or the authority? Yes, the project manager and his team of people, those who plan or those who help in planning the project. Yes, you got it right. You got to do is okay. do this in the beginning. So how do you do it? You collect the requirement. First, you start with a very clear objective. Then you do a detailed mm -hmm. requirement analysis. You document it. Then you get it cross-checked, vetted, and signed by the client or the end user. Right? Then what do you do next? You define the work to be done. 
based upon the requirement. That's what we need to do to meet this requirement. And then you cross check it with every team member. When every team member agrees, you create the estimates of time, create good estimates of cost, and you create good So what do you, you create good baseline, right? So then you have risk register, change in configuration manual plan basically tells that who is authorized to change it because if you put this document up on a, say a portal, okay, where all team members can see it and suppose there are team members spread across various geographical locations and for them it is a single point of truth. So if a particular standard is mentioned, so everybody will use it, isn't it? So everybody will do the work in the same uniform fashion. So that uniform fashion could be right or it could be wrong because they are looking at the, uh, the um, I mean the PMP document. So don't you think that you should safeguard this document? If someone comes and he just enters into the document and he changes it, since it is a single point of truth, it can cause problem. Now, if it is changed without any authorization and the rest of the people would believe the change, now what is the risk here? Mm -hmm. The risk here is that the project work will go wrong. So you would like to first cross check yeah. that if these changes is to be done. So are these changes valid? Are these changes required? Are these changes authorized? So if yes, only yeah. then make these changes. So that's what the configuration management plan is all about okay so you make sure that if you want to make any changes which happens ac according to a set pattern it is authorized it is clean it is risk free mm -hmm. it is something which is acceptable to all it is something which will help or assist in achievement of the project goal and objective and not distract okay so that's why we put this configuration management plan because this document is the sole crucial single point of truth and if there is any change to it, it can lead to absolutely right things or absolutely wrong things also. So that's why. So what we do next, we do the direct and manage project execution. So you know we are moving from left to right. If you look at your process, I mean within the knowledge area. So direct and manage yeah. project execution. So what do we do here? So the whole team comes together, they look at the plan, they look at the task and they do the task one by one, one by one. So what happens when you do the task? When you do the actions, so what do you get? You get the deliverables. So what do we do in the project mm -hmm. execution? We perform the activities to accomplish project requirements. So what is the requirement? That is the objective. Yeah. Suppose if I am to build a software, so I, I would be building the module by module. So what is module? Module is a deliverable. I hope now you understand the difference and relation between deliverable and product. The product is the whole thing and the deliverable is part of the product. Okay, so, yeah. so yeah. we give the work to each team member. We assign the work and we ask them to do the work and this way we create the deliverable and during the project execution we staff, we train, staff means taking in people, we train the people, we manage the team members, we get manage and use resources, all types of main material and cost, we implement the plan standards and methods, we establish and manage project communication channels, we generate project data, status and forecasting, we issue change requests and adopt approved changes into the project scope, plans and environment. We manage risk and implement risk response activities. So we are doing all these things. We are making sure that we are achieving the goal. We manage sellers and suppliers. We collect and document the lessons learned. Because when we are doing the work, that's where we do the things right or wrong, isn't it? When we are doing the project work. Now suppose if you do something right, it's fine, it will be documented. But suppose if you do something wrong, would you like it to be repeated for rest of the project or in the future? Um, 
would you like a mistake mm -hmm. to be repeated for the rest of the project duration or in the future projects within your organization what would be your answer yes or no uh, yeah no your answer should be no you don't want the mistake to be repeated so what do you do how do you prevent the future teams from making a mistake um keep keep track um no should be learn from the previous experience yes Let's so this, yeah document some historical information yes the lesson learned would put down certain things you would say that look we were trying to do this in this project and this is how we went about and we made a mistake and then you would write that what is the antidote what you shouldn't be doing so you know this way it, it improves it improves the future project work which is done in this organization so you know a lesson learned is very important so that's what you do in direct and manage project execution process so what do you get as an output mm -hmm. deliverable that is the first thing that you get and along with the deliverable you get work information so work information like what is the actual time taken, what is the actual cost, what is the actual work effort, are you on time, are you on budget, are you on the work effort and the work performance information is used for monitoring and controlling the process group. Why do you need to monitor and control? Because if you don't do it then what will happen? you would have time overrun, you would have cost overrun and you would have work effort overrun and still not be able to create something which is considered as quality. It would not meet the expectation of the end user or the client. Do you think it is a desirable thing? Yes or no? Not uh, yeah. achieving the quality expectations of the client or the end user. Would you, would you like that to happen in, in, in your project? Um, no. Okay, tell me what's your current project and what is the immediate deliverable scheduled? What's your current project about? Uh, sorry, can project. Sorry, I'm not quite sure what you you are asking. Uh, what is the objective of the project? Um, that would be the scope or the current requirements. No, no. You are working on a project currently. Yeah. So what is the project about? What is the objective? What Can you describe it in say uh, three, four sentences that okay this is what I'm doing on the project and this is what we plan to achieve after completing all the work. Ah, I'm, I'm a bit lost. Yeah, tell me. What um, do you think you will achieve in your current project? You mean so the objective of the objective, project? Yeah, objective of the project. Are you building a software? Are you building a product? Or what exactly you are doing right now? Uh, uh, selling the products and services. Pardon? Uh, you are creating a product. Um, I want to sell the product to the customer on the market. Okay, so are, 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 are you running a marketing campaign right now? Uh, yeah. Okay, so wouldn't you like your marketing campaign to be successful? I can sell as much as I can as a product and um, getting more people to know about the new product. Yes, so that's fine. So that's really very good. 
so you know your deliverables so this is what you get your deliverables so when you are directing and managing the project ex execution so make sure that you know your deliverables make sure that you know the actual time actual cost and actual work effort and you are comparing them with the planned values so you need to compare them with the planned values so that you can control it if you don't control it then what will happen the project will be having time overrun cost overrun so that will be a problem you don't want that so what we do here that we uh, put the approved corrective actions we put the approved preventive actions we put the approved defect repair so suppose if you're doing something and you find something has been uh, produced defect it I mean defectively so there is some defect so what do you do so you fix it you make sure that that you create something that is acceptable to the client the client won't accept any kind of defective products okay so we all know that so that's what we do in direct and manage project work execution okay so these are the inputs tool and techniques and outputs which you can read and these are the process inputs describe tool and technique output and make sure that you know your outputs outputs are what first of all the deliverables now when i talk about deliverables now deliverables are of two kind tangible you see this and intangible deliverables now what is the difference suppose if you uh, made a software system do you think that the software system delivered to the client without any kind of use training and user training would be much useful Do you think a software would be useful without training? So, so suppose if you constructed uh, a building for a client and you hand over the building without any kind of diagram or any kind of uh, uh, layout of electrical, plumbing, sanitation, do you think uh, uh, the client yeah. would be able to maintain the building or manage the building without this diagrams or layout? Will it be possible? Uh, no. No. So you know what you are giving along with the main deliverable is called the intangible deliverable. So when you are providing training to the people to use the software, you are providing intangible deliverable. Okay, when you are buying a mobile phone, suppose if you bought a mobile phone and you open the package but you don't get the manual, do you think that you would use the, you would be able to use the mobile phone to all its full value and the full features without the manual, without the user manual? Will the mobile phone be 100% useful to you? Maybe you can use it, but maybe uh, but not 100% you wouldn't know that what are the finer points of this yeah. so you know what is that manual manual is the intangible deliverable the, what is the deliverable the deliverable is the phone itself so you got to understand this fact that in your project so when you are doing the project work so you should be aware of what are the intangible deliverables of your project and you should be taking care of these things in the beginning so that you know that this is tangible, this is in, intangible, so that when they are produced, so they are produced in a synchronized fashion and you can deliver both of them to the client. Right. So make sure that you know and use this information in your current project as well, so that you get better. Because yeah. you know, what is the purpose of this training? So the purpose of this training is to make you better as a project manager make you better as a project team member if you are not the project manager never mind but still you can understand a lot of things that a project manager already knows about so when you work closely with the project manager you can work better you can understand better you can give a better response and you can also manage a lot of things at your own end slowly and slowly you would grow into a project manager's role within your current organization so when you are in a project manager's role so you would be able to use the information already gained here some of it might still be retained so when you do the project work so you should make sure that 
any kind of the project work is basically having a tangible and intangible deliverable and make sure that yeah. both of them are delivered to the client so that the client gets the maximum value and he can appreciate the quality of the work done right so yeah. you should look at the work and you should provide the information to monitoring and control so that you can take a corrective action and preventive action now what is the difference between corrective and preventive action if you find a defect so what would a corrective action do and what would a preventive action do that's the the corrective would be um, fixing the defect and the preventive would be like um, see how we can like prevent the defects happen again hmm. yes so that is fine so make sure that when you see a problem you fix it so that is corrective but you don't want it to be repeated that is preventive got the point why would you prevent so that you don't waste time and money but because if a problem is happening again and again and if you're correcting each time so which is good but each time you are correcting don't you think you are utilizing time and resource so wouldn't it be better that if you can prevent it so you have to take corrective action immediately and you have to also think in terms of how I can prevent a repeat of this pattern of mistake right so that is what you do in direct and manage project work and in monitor and control project work you basically look at what is happening in the execution and you look at the actual time taken you look at the actual cost you look at the actual work and you compare it with the planned time planned cost planned work and you manage variances variances are the differences which can occur during the work and if the variances are not controlled if they are let go loose they can cause time overrun cost overrun and dissatisfaction in the stakeholder they can cause a project loss which no project manager wants so basically that's what we are doing project management for we because we want to achieve the objective within optimal time and cost right isn't it a fact because if you have time and cost to overrun and we create something now due to delayed delivery the client might say no I don't want it now I don't need it you are delayed but suppose if we put something on time but we uh, use lot of resources to do it and waste resources and we don't make much profit do you think uh, it will be good for the organization no it will not be so that's why we need project management so that is the importance of the project management so we need to manage the variances so can we do one thing can we take a 10 minutes break and be back and continue with the discussion uh, you, want to uh, you want to continue hello yeah uh, yeah. Uh, can we take a 10 minutes break and be back? Uh, yeah, 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 sure. Uh, okay, uh, I mean, uh, what's your, uh, what's the time you're in? Is it uh, too late in the evening? It's uh, uh, in the Indian yeah, standard? Yeah, I, 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 got to, I got to, like, leave within, like, 15 minutes. Oh, you got to leave 15 minutes? Uh, okay. So, yeah, because it's uh, around, like, 6.30 now. Okay, this is okay. You are nearly six thirty now. Okay, I got it. So yeah. right now it is three fifty three p.m. So three fifty three p.m. So it is one and a. Um, so you are like two hours ahead or two and a half hours ahead. Two and a half yeah. hours ahead. So it's like four p.m. Okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, I mean, uh, have another ten minutes so we can close it. Now this monitor and control project work is something that a project manager should be doing proactively. Now it is the most crucial part of the project management where the people mostly, I mean those who start project management, they get responsibilities of the project, they do not understand in the beginning. In the beginning you know what happens, we say look I have planned it well, nothing can go wrong. But a good planning doesn't make a project successful. What makes it successful is that we take the project by the horn. You know what do you mean, what I'm meaning when I say take the project by the horn? Have you seen cowboys? Uh, yeah. Riding on top of the bulls, 
you know sometimes what happens yeah. if the bull is very strong it just flips down the cowboy but if the cowboy is good at his job he stays on the top of the bull yeah. is it so just to imagine that the bull is your project and you are the cowboy or the, you are the cowgirl so you want to stay on top of the project you want to be in control so how you can be yeah. by using this process monitor and control project work now what three parameters would you be looking at when you want to monitor and control your project work do you, do you remember there are three parameters of a project health what are they um time cost cost time uh what effort work effort that is the man hours that you are utilizing yeah. if you have these three well planned and you have something to compare against you take the actual values compare and you manage the variance okay you tell your team look guys you speed up your work do you need any equipment i am shifting you are swapping the roles you know this is what a project manager does on a day to day basis he looks at the plan and if things are going out of the plan so he corrects it he puts it on a course correction just like if 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 the pilot is they flying a plane now during the flight a pilot can put the plane on the autopilot but he continues to monitor it but suppose if the autopilot goes out of the track so what the pilot will do he will take a corrective action he will put it back on to the pre determined path so you know this is what a project manager does when he is doing monitoring and control of the project work does it sound right and does it sound appropriate to do yes okay so are 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 you doing it right now monitoring and controlling your project work yeah yes okay are you using any kind of software to do it or you are using by some other means um just some like tools or documents to okay keep track on the project progress so how do you do it are you do are you using excel or something like that to keep track of each yeah, of excel, the plan yeah yeah excel or so project uh, or office microsoft project okay you are using microsoft project that's good 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 so you are already you are uh, aware of it so you know that is an excellent project management tool and basically when you have planned it you i believe that you must have mm -hmm. created a baseline of the project plan mm -hmm. and then you would be putting in the actual values of the task as they are being performed by the various team members and you would be able to get a analysis which will be done by the software you have to just take the decisions that where you have to speed up which task where you have to apply more resources where you have to look into some sort of troubleshooting so that would be monitor and control project work okay so what do you need monitoring it means collecting measuring and distributing performance information and assessing the measurement and keep in mind monitoring is done throughout the project you cannot have monitoring in the beginning or randomly it is to be done continuously each and every day and controlling means determining corrective or preventive actions so first of all you will correct something if you find something wrong then you would think can this mistake repeat again can this problem repeat again if yes so let's fix it so that is a preventive action and you might need to even replan something if you find that something is out of the plan okay and you would look at any kind of impact on the time cost quality human resource procurement if that is there and you take care of that and you would follow up on the actions to find out that if you change something did it have a beneficial action on the project or not beneficial effect means that has the project come back within the planned values or not am i still going to finish it on time as per this task plan i'm going to finish it within the budget of this task am i going to finish it within the work effort of this task so you know that would be the mm -hmm. result of a good controlling right so i hope you are getting a good picture about the project management right okay so i believe that it's time for you to leave and uh, i believe that it might be very crowded okay so we all live in mega cities these days and i understand that you have to leave a little bit early so that you can beat the traffic okay so so be sure thank you so much
Okay, so thank you very much. So, so tomorrow we'll start uh, on or before yeah. time. Okay, so that we can cover up. So I think that we are on time. Yeah. So, so we'll move okay. faster tomorrow. Okay. So, uh, can, can you type in your mail uh, mail ID here so that I can send you certain materials to read? Sure. Just type your mail ID into the chat box here. Okay then. Thank you very much, Hilary. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. Bye. Good night. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Take care. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.